It's very nice to be here. Many times I came to this walk and did programs. And in those days, we were all younger. Now we've gone older. <laughs> but the soul doesn't grow old. The soul is eternal. But our bodies, they get older. The word is a pakshaya. They dwindle. The body dwindles. So I'll read a verse from Bhagavad Gita. First, a few prayers to uh, Rupa Goswami and uh, yesterday disappearance, Gaudi Das Pandit. Uh, so this is Mangla Charanam. Mangal means auspicious. So by <coughs> reciting a uh, spiritual sound, it creates auspiciousness. Om Ajnanat Marandasya Gananjana Slakaya Chakshmatamina Tasmai Shri Gurve Nama Shri Chaitanya Manomishtam Stapatamina Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadanti Sambhadatakam Pandeham Shri Guru Shri Atapatakam Alam Shri Guru Vaishnavamascha Shri Rupam Sakarajatam Sakanam Rabunatam Itam Tam Shri Jeevam Sadvaitam Sadvatam Vrijanam Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Varam Sakanam Lalita Shri Vishabhitamascha Can join in Hey Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagadpate Kopisha Gopi Kanta Radha Kanta Namaste Tapta Kancha Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Prishavanu Sudhi Pranamani Hari Priya Vansha Kalpa Tupyascha Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharine Nivashishishanyavani Prashkachadi Sitarana everyone Shri Krishna Chaitanya Kaudichananda Yadvita Everyone Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Yum, yum. Everyone now, yum, yum. Vapi, smara, smaranam, bhavam, tiachanti, anti, kalevaram, tum tum, evatiti, kantaya, sada, tadbhava. Avitaha. 
Yam yam vapismaram bhagam tiyajanti anti klevaram tam tam ivataya kantaya sadata bhava bhavita. Translation <coughs> Lord Krishna <coughs> says Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, O son of Kunti, that state he will attain without fail. Repeat, whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, O son of Kunti, that state he will attain without fail. Uh, Popot Tika by Srila Prabhupada. The process of changing one's nature at the crucial moment of death is here explained. A person who at the end of his life quits his body thinking of Krishna attains the transcendental nature of the Supreme Lord. But it is not true that a person who thinks of something else other than Krishna attains the same transcendental state. This is a point we should note very carefully. How can one die in the proper state of mind? Maharaj Bharat Although a great personality thought of a deer at the end of his life, and so in his next life he was transferred into the body of a deer. Although, as a deer, he remembered his past activities, he had to accept that animal body. <coughs> So whatever one is thinking of at the time of death, uh, that state you attain. So the first point is we actually don't know when we're going to die. We like to think another 30 years, another 40 years. Um, even that we don't think about. Most people don't even think about. Dying. They don't like to think about death. They uh, accuse you of being a pessimist. Why do you always talk about nasty things like death? Uh, so occasionally one person may think a little bit about death, um, but even this is quite unusual. But if we see around us our family members, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, they've all expired. So we should also uh, naturally assume we're going to pass. So one has to prepare for that. And that is what we're actually doing as devotees. We are preparing for when we leave our body. So if one is thinking of Krishna at the time of death, then one goes to that level or that abode. Or one goes to Vaikuntha, or one goes to Ayodhya, or one goes to Dwarka, or one goes to Vrindavan, depending on what we're thinking about. Mm. So, one has to train the mind. It's a question of training. When we have young children, one has to train the children, isn't it? I never used to like doing my homework, but my mother told me I must do it. That I would have preferred to go and play football or cricket. But we have to be trained. I was 
reading how when Prabhupada, our Guru Maharaj, when he was young, he didn't want to go to school. So Prabhupada's mother had to employ someone um, to take him to school. So he didn't want to go to school. So there are many things we don't want to do, but we have to be trained to. Uh, another word for disciple is discipline. One has to be disciplined. There's a degree of self-control. We have to control ourselves a little. Like the other day was a Kaddishi. So on a Kaddishi we don't take the grains. Um, so one has to train, and this is what we're doing, Krishna consciousness. It's called Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. It means observing various rules and regulations. And often we may not want to follow them. Just like the alarm clock goes off early in the morning, maybe four o'clock. Now, do you want to get up or would you rather stay in bed? Stay in bed is warm, but we have to sacrifice. And we rise early and we wash the face, we take a bath and we chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And sometimes the mind will object. Not sometimes, often the mind object, or objects and um, gives you so many excuses. Oh, I'm getting flu. I think I'm getting COVID. Um, I have a headache. Uh, let me just rest more and then do my spiritual chanting later. The mind is very expert at creating diversions. You know what is diversions? Excuses. Hmm? Everyone has excuses. So, one with intelligence, you have to know what you're going to do. So the idea is to try to think of God. The best way we can achieve that in this age, in the Kali Yuga, is by chanting His holy name. Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Kirtan Hari, to chant the name of God. Hmm. Gradually, as we practice this chanting, it becomes more natural. It becomes more natural. An example is you're learning how to type. So you have the typewriter or the computer board. And to begin with, you have you, you, one finger at a time and you look at what you're doing. But then after perhaps one year, you can touch type. And then maybe after two years, you can actually look at someone else and still type and get it right. So it becomes like more natural, almost more spontaneous. So spontaneous devotion is only performed by the residents of Vrindavan. It's very exalted, it's very high. We can hear about these activities of the residents of Vrindavan, but we shouldn't try to imitate because we're on a lower level. We're on a much lower level. So therefore we have to practice. We have to practice. Prabhupada in San Francisco, one of the first morning walks he ever performed so he's walking and one lady disciple, I think it was Govinda, 
Dasi. And Prabhupada said, are you chanting Krishna's name? Prabhupada asked. And Govinda Dasi said, sometimes, but also sometimes not. And then Prabhupada gave the example, you have to train. And at that moment, a man ran past. We see this. You know, they're running. They go out the streets, ladies and men, and they run, presumably for the comrades. So Prabhupada said, as this man is training, you also have to train the mind. If we start running, you, you probably will do 100 meters and then collapse. But if you do every day, after one month, you can probably do one kilometer. So it's a question of training. So Prabhupada gave that example. One has to train the mind. Mm. Uh, so then you may ask, well, what if someone dies in a car crash or in a coma? Um, then um, Krishna is in your heart. He knows what you've done. He knows how you've surrendered. The Lord is within the heart and he reciprocates. Uh, so you may not actually be thinking of Krishna or Vrindavan or Lord Chaitanya. Right at that moment of death, you actually may be in a coma. But still, Krishna will reciprocate. Declare it only, my devotees never perish. So the devotee is the soul or the spirit within the body. Naturally, this body will perish due to old age, organ failure, disease, age, whatever. But the soul or the actual devotee never perishes. So there may be accidental death. But still, uh, Krishna will reciprocate with you and will help you. And you'll get good birth. You'll get high birth. High birth means an opportunity to think of the Lord. High birth doesn't actually mean a lot of money or being very handsome or being like a Bollywood actress and being Miss Universe. Uh, this is not actually uh, favorable. If you're extremely handsome, if you're a woman and very beautiful, it's not actually favorable because men will chase after you all the time, isn't it? And if a man is extremely handsome, women will chase after the man. And if you're particularly rich, you'll have family members and people who hang on to you. They're not really interested in you. What do they want? Paisa. Paisa pek. They want that money. One man in America, I don't know whether it was a man or a woman, but they won, they won on the lotto $1.3 billion. Quite a lot, isn't that? What is that? In? That's 20 billion rands. And they won it. And suddenly they become very popular. And people are phoning them. How are you? <laughs> there was one lady, she won like 700 million uh, dollars and uh, she was living in a old age home. This is again in Europe or America. She was living in an old age home and there was a picture of her in the wheelchair and she was smiling, you know, they, they, they have a picture of the check, you know, 700 million, and she's laughing. 
but two family members are standing behind her and they're young and they're laughing more. <laughs> they're laughing more. So, um, real wealth means to possess God. And anyone who possesses the holy name possesses God, possesses Krishna, possesses Lord Ram, possesses Lord Jagannath or Lord Chaitanya. There are many names of God. There are primary names, there are secondary names. It's not correct to say that God only has one name. It's not logical. God has unlimited names. And there are primary names like the name Krishna. And there are secondary names like Jagadish. A secondary name is a name of God in relation to the material world. So, um, Ishvara. Ishvara means Parama Ishvara the supreme controller of this material world. It's a secondary name. Uh, so one who is accustomed to chanting the Lord's holy name, that per person actually possesses Krishna. So this chanting is very simple and very easy. And regardless of whether you're old or young, or Indian or black-bodied or whatever, you can chant the names of God. And we see in the last 500 years how this chanting has expanded throughout the world. Some 60 years ago, there was no Bhagavad Gita in English uh, in Disciple Succession, the Bhakti version. There were other Bhagavad Gitas, but they weren't translated and commented on by Vaishnavs. So then Prabhupada translated Bhagavad Gita into English. Now we have it in 60 different languages, Bhagavad Gita spreading, and people are actually reading. It's very wonderful. Mm. So uh, Bhagavad Gita contains philosophy. Krishna consciousness is a philosophical um, practice. It's not sentimental. Many of you are coming from a Hindu, Hindu background and it's somewhat sentimental. Sentimental. I remember often on the Easter weekend at Isapingo Temple Thousands of people come. We used to go and collect and sell books and things. Uh, and often they would sacrifice animals. This is very sentimental. There's no philosophical understanding behind it. Mm. So we see this uh, in Hinduism. We see it in Islam. We see it in Christianity also. We see it in Catholicism. We see it in Buddhism. Uh, sentimental. Uh, but Krishna consciousness, Raja Vidya, Raja Gum, the king of knowledge, it explains it's, it's philosophy. And this appeals to us. It convinces us. Um, so, uh, whatever we think of, that state we attain without fail. Mm. One devotee in America, he told me a story. So he was in a car and he was driving and he came to a, a railway crossing. And he went across the railway and right at that moment, his car stopped. It stalled. You know, like it just, it wouldn't go forward. So he's busy trying to start the engine.
turning the key and turning it and turning. And of course, he was attached to his car. It's like we're all attached to our cars, <laughs> even if it's a Taz, we're attached to it. So as he was fiddling, trying to start the car, a train came. But he was so much absorbed and attached to his car that he couldn't really figure out the train is about to come, it's about to hit my car. And um, he should have jumped out of the car and ran away, but he, he, he couldn't do that. So the, the train, it hit the car, and then he became unconscious, totally unconscious. Now he's a Vaishnava. He's a disciple of Prabhupada. He's one of my god brothers. So he wakes up in the hospital and the lights are shining and he's in a hospital. Um, and the devotees, they come to see him. Uh, and obviously the first question the devotees ask him is what? What were you thinking at the time of death? And they all wanted to hear him say, when well, I was thinking of Krishna. So they asked him, what were you thinking of when the train hit? And he said, I was thinking of my wife. <laughs> I was thinking of my wife. Of course, his wife was a devotee. <laughs> and as I said, Krishna reciprocates in many ways. But um, this verse sort of indicates it's a little mechanical, but it's not. And Krishna sees in your lifetime living here on South Coast as a Pingo Durban, he sees how much you chanted how much devotion you performed, um, how you tried to practice and spread God consciousness throughout your life, uh, a big yasarat. He's fully cognizant. He's aware of every little, not only devotional activities, but even what you think, even devotional thoughts. And he's very merciful and he reciprocates with you. And you actually, you don't have to do much to please Krishna. You don't have to do much. So he gives you good result. And good result is actually we go back to the spiritual world. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Anchalita chapter three, text 79, it's mentioned how when Lord Chaitanya was present 500 years ago, every jiva in the universe, that's called Brahmanda, after Lord Brahma. The universe is called the Brahmanda, after Brahma. So every jiva, stava jangama, stava means stationary, jangama means moving. So every living entity, whether it's standing, that's like a tree, or moving, fish, human beings, to me Vaikuntha Paitava went back to Vaikuntha. Haridas Thakur said, to me, you have taken back to Vaikuntha all living entities. That means the sardines, that are waiting to be caught and eaten, the blades of grass, the chickens, the cows, all human beings, all sava jivata chati, jiva chati, all living entities, jiva means living entities, spirit souls. That was at the time of Lord Chaitanya 500 years ago. Very powerful. And this universe, we think it's very big, but it's like one mustard seed. 
in a big sack. You know, you've seen the mustard seed? It's very small. Now imagine a hundred sacks. There's unlimited universes. So Lord Chaitanya took every jiva in this particular universe back to the spiritual world. So I'm comparing this to us now. 500 years later, we are living here now. And we're chanting Krishna's name and actually we're worshipping Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. So we will also get a very good result. That's my firm conviction. And some of you are even initiated. That's wonderful. But you've taken shelter of the holy name and Lord Chaitanya. Lord Nityananda, before Prabhupada came, before the devotees came here to South Africa, no one knew about Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda. Am I correct? One person did. I came in 1974, uh, and I came to Durban, and I remember I was sleeping on the beach in a car on the beachfront, and the police came. In those days, you couldn't sleep on the beach in a car. They moved us on. So then I went to um, Schlando Rocks, and I got my sleeping bag out, and I slept on the, on the verge. You know where it, the grass, it goes down, and I kept on rolling down. <laughs> so then we went to stay in Tongat Beach, and the first program we ever did was in Inanda. Now there was no Phoenix in those days. Phoenix was sugar cane. There was no house. So we went to Inanda football field and there was a tent and there was a Krishastami program. So it would have been uh, September, uh, 1974, because Krishastami is always about now. Uh, and I went into the tent, and on the altar, there was a small deity of Lord Chaitanya this big, and I was amazed. I was really shocked. A deity of Lord Chaitanya, brass, two hands in the air. I took it as a sign. Lord Chaitanya wanted us to come here. And then we had a kirtan. And then I asked the man who organized the program, how did you get a deity of Lord Chaitanya? Because generally Hindus don't really know anything about Lord Chaitanya. And this man was a pandit. And he said that he went to India and he went to Calcutta and he went to the Gaudiamat Temple in Bug Bazaar in 1972. And he bought a deity of Lord Chaitanya and he brought it all the way back to South Africa. And he put it on his altar. So I think this is the first deity of Lord Chaitanya in the whole of Africa. Quite amazing. So, um, Many years later, I lost touch with this man. He was a priest and he was a vegetarian in Inanda, he was a priest. And um, about 15 or 20 years ago, I was giving a talk at the um, New Jagannath Puri Temple. And I, I related this story as I did to you now. And at the end of my talk, one lady came forward. Her name was Ritu. And she said, that man who had that deity was my father. And he has recently died. And I want to give you the deity. <laughs> so she gave me that deity. And I have it in my house. Hmm. It's amazing how Lord Chaitanya works. So in the Anshya Leela it's mentioned 
that every jiva, every living entity in this universe went back. The word is tumi. You know, tumi means like you. Tumi. Vaikuntha. Vaitava. Taken to Vaikuntha. So if we continue chanting Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Karada, Shri Mahasiddhi and Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, continue offering our food to Krishna, trying to uh, practice and also spread Krishna consciousness, we will also get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya without a doubt. And we'll be able to enter into these pastimes and we will never take birth again in a Sapingo or Lotus Park or Orient Park. We'll go back to the spiritual world. Mm. It's very powerful, Krishna consciousness, <coughs> message of Lord Chaitanya. So these deities are very nice. I recommend that everyone should have deities of Kornitai, Lord Nityananda, in their house. And the worship of Kornitai, anyone can do. Um, and there's no offenses. It's very simple, very easy. Shishi Nitai Gaura Hare Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Shila Rupa Goswami Ki, Shri Gauri Das Pandit Ki, it was their disappearance day yesterday. Rupa Goswami and Gauri Das. So, does anyone have any questions or would you like to make any comments? Yes, sir. Mm. We thank you very, very much for bringing Krishna consciousness to Lotus Park. It happened on a certain April, in the month of November, in the year 1980, that you did the first program in Lotus Park Hall, and you enlightened a lot of people, and they became devotees. And thereafter, the Lotus Park Namaha is still carried on. Thank you very much. Uh, Good. Yes, we want continuity. <laughs> Anyone else like to ask or say anything? Yes. How do you go? Some say it was written by Sanatan, some say by Gopalbhata Goswami, some say Gopalbhata edited it. Um, generally, we, we understand Gopalbhata Goswami. And Hari Bhakti Vilas is a particular scripture which appeals very much to Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. And Abhidhi Sadhana Bhakti stresses rules and regulations. And there are devotees 
who are very um, fastidious. You know that word fastidious? Fussy. They're fussy. Like I'm picking up this glass and drinking with the right hand. I should actually pour the water and not touch it with my lips. What to speak of if I drink with the left hand? And they will say this is wrong. Fastidious. I, I take the, the Bhagavad Gita and I put it on my lap. This is, this is not right. It should be above the lap. You understand? Um, when I came in, I was wearing shoes and I put my respect to the deities. Not correct. I should take the shoes off. Rathiatra. I've seen uh, Prabhupada dance at the Rathiatra in London in 1974. He's wearing his shoes. But I've also seen Gaudiya Mat Sanyasis at Rathiatra. They take their shoes off. So, Hari Bhakti Vilas is full of rules and regulations. And there are people that thrive on that. They, they like it. Um, and it's really designed for those types of people. So, we have the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. Now, what's more important? The spirit, but also the letter of the law, you can't disregard. You can't disregard the letter of the law. But the spirit is more important. And the spirit, of course, is bhakti. So Hari Bhakti Vilas was specially compiled as an answer to the Mayavadis who very um, tenaciously and fastidiously were following a scripture, I think it was by Rahunanda Nathak or someone, uh, full of very exact rules and regulations. But the ultimate aim was Maya Buddy. You merge with God. So Lord Chaitanya inspired Gopal Bhatta Goswami to compile Hare Bhakti Vilas. So this is where you'll get a statement where the Lord will not accept anything uh, without a Tulsi leaf. But we were offering our food in America in the 1960s and Tulsi hadn't come. And in some countries, Tulsi just doesn't grow. It's too cold. But we still offer our food. So does that mean that Krishna won't accept it? No, Krishna will accept it. But if you have Tulsi around, then you should put on the, on the boga food. So there are many intricate nitpicky, that word nitpicky, <laughs> fastidious uh, bit of rules and regulations. Uh, and if I started telling you them all, you'd fall off your seat and you'd say, I can't do all this, it's too complicated. Yeah. So, we practice as we've been taught by Prabhupada and Prabhupada was very lenient, very lenient. Uh, it was only like a Kadashi. Now, for years I followed a Kadashi, um, but it was only later in the 1980s that I heard uh, Shuddha. Shuddha Akadashi, pure Akadashi, no water. No water. And secondly, stay up all night. <laughs> so that came later. But Prabhupada was very lenient. There's a story 
uh, of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta. And uh, he had a disciple called Hari Griva. Hari Griva became uh, Bhakti Madhava Maharaj, a very powerful preacher. And it was a Kadashi, and he wanted to go and preach, but he was feeling weak. So he was fasting. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta said, no, give him food, because preaching is higher. Give him food and let him go and preach. The, the principle of preaching is superior. And those that can't preach, let them stay in the mud and fast. This is from Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Bhakti Bhai Bhav. So Prabhupada didn't emphasize so much Akadashi or the month of Kartik. We're coming into the month of Kartik. Um, later, we understood the importance of Kartik and Akadashi. And traditionally, you're supposed to break your fast on Akadashi, on a Jamastami and uh, Balaram's appearance, all these things, uh, are with a Kadashi Prashant. But we take rotis and samosas. During Chattomasya, they're not supposed to eat eggplant or loki. But we don't know anything about that. And even there are many members of the Gaudiya Math who refuse to eat carrots. They won't offer carrots to Lord Jagannath. <laughs> they won't offer potatoes. Alu, potato, because it's underground. And they won't offer tomato, red passion. And they won't offer carrot. There are many members, Gordian Man, who will not take carrot. But Prabhupada taught us carrot halava. <laughs> so try to figure that out now. So Prabhupada was actually very lenient and his first emphasis was preach, preach, preach. And not so much uh, intricate rules, intricate regulations. And he introduced it slowly. In like a needle, <clears throat> out like a plow. He introduced the more stricter side. For instance, when the first 12 devotees got initiated in New York on Krishastami in 1966, Prabhupada didn't even tell them the four regulative principles. <laughs> it was only a few days after Prabhupada mentioned, oh, by the way, no meat, no fish, no eggs. No innocent sex, no gambling, no intoxication. They didn't take those vows when, when they had the hubbub. And then <clears throat> when the first deity of Lord Jagannath was being carved in San Francisco by my godbrother Shama Sundar Prabhu, who's still alive, still practicing, Shama Sundar Prabhu, Prabhupada came to his workshop to see the deity of Lord Chaitanya being carved out of wood and a deity of Lord Balaram being carved out of wood and on top of the deity of Balaram what was that? 20 cigarettes. I think it was Pau Mau. I don't think it was Peter Stuyvesant but I don't know about all these things anyhow. So there they were on the top of the deity of Lord Balaram. <laughs> so then Prabhupada said, please try to give up smoking, and then suggested how you cut it down uh, from 20 a day to 19 to 18, and then to one, and then to half, and then half, and like that. So very lenient, extremely lenient. But there are those people who really thrive on these uh, intricate, almost smarter Brahmins, rules and regulations. And um, they will um, emphasize it very much, which is also all right, because 
many types of people approach Krishna and we have to facilitate everyone so there are people that come from that type of background so that's all right also anything else you'd like to ask So please continue chanting at Julan Yatra, where we start placing Radha and Krishna on the swing. I think of Radha Radhanath, and we swing the Lord. It's mentioned in the Bhagavatam, I'll finish with this, Canto 8, Chapter 16, Text 52, that in a spiritual body, the devotee plays and dances with the Lord. And then text 53, the ultimate goal of life is to live with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, to play with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, to eat with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and to dance with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Canto 8, chapter 16, text 53. So God, Krishna, Radha and Krishna, Dalita, Vishaka, they are persons. And our ultimate goal is to dance with them, to eat with them, to play with them, and to live with them. Not to hang around in Lotus Park or Ichi Pingo. <laughs> not the goal but you're all on the path and this is very incredible very good please continue with enthusiasm and try not to let Maya uh, erode your enthusiasm continue associate with devotees chant Krishna's name thank you very much so on Friday is Balaram's appearance day He's another personality. And Prabhupada said, there's no difference. Lord Balaram, Balaram has all the potencies of Krishna. The only difference being their color. And Lord Balaram is like an autumn cloud. So we'll be doing the festival there at Radha Radha Nath, Balaram's appearance day. And you're very welcome. So we'll finish, unless there's any more question. Then Lord Kirtan, I'm not able really to sing. I would request our local Kirtan devotees. Can you lead the kitten? A few minutes, three or four minutes. <laughs> 